Right, well, staying with uh, sport kind of, TV snooker commentator Ted Lowe once said, for those of you watching in black and white, the pink is the ball next to the green. Sounds a bit bizarre, but it wasn't at the time, because up until the late 1960s, colour television was just a dream. But all that changed here on ITV exactly 50 years ago today. And uh, Andy Bevan joins us live now from Birmingham City University to tell us a bit more. And Andy, if you don't mind me saying so, you're looking a little bit retro there. I am indeed, and that's because the images that you're watching now are coming from a camera which transmitted its first images back in 1969, long before HD or widescreen. It's one of four cameras that make up this outside broadcast unit, which was built in 1969 by Southern Television. And uh, it's here in Birmingham this weekend for a special event to mark 50 years of colour on ITV that's been organised uh, at uh, Birmingham City University by Kaleidoscope, the TV heritage experts. Now, in 1969, commercial television in the Midlands was run by ATV, whose boss was uh, Lord Lou Grade. Now, he'd made lots of programmes in colour for the American market, so when Britain's big switchover happened, it was quite fitting that one of his most successful programmes said bye-bye to black and white. Five... <laughs> Four, three, two, one. The countdown to colour was over. At 9:45 a.m. on Saturday, November the 15th, 1969, Thunderbirds were go, and so was a whole new world on ITV. Twenty minutes later, this appeared: the UK's first colour TV commercial. Bird's Eye paid just £23 to sell peas for 30 seconds in the Midlands region. The ad makers said they wanted to give the housewife a feeling of a beautiful sunny morning. After years of black and white blandness, TV advertising had come of age. Colour had been around in the USA since 1954 but the American TV system was electronically incompatible with ours. Even so, although they couldn't transmit colour programmes here, British TV bosses saw a lucrative export market for them across the pond, and that meant employing some extraordinary production methods. My uncle Lou Gray, who founded ATV, he made a lot of shows for the American networks, and he would make them for the UK and for America. So he'd have to shoot the shows twice, once for America in colour and once for the UK in black and white. I mean, madness. Well, I'd rather not. And some shows, like this one with Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, were made with US colour and UK black and white cameras recording simultaneously side by side. As you can see here, the angles are slightly different. When ITV first began broadcasting in the mid-1950s, it was only on in the afternoons and the evenings. The rest of the time, viewers were treated to this. The test card, in black and white of course, primarily used by TV engineers to install and repair sets. But suddenly, if you had access to one of the 16 or so thousand colour sets in this part of the world, then you could see this, the new colour test card. It became an iconic TV image seen all over the world. But for one eight-year-old schoolgirl, it was life-changing. My father worked at the BBC and when colour was being introduced, they needed something to put on the screen so that engineers could get the colour balances right. My sister and I were both photographed and in the end they decided to use me because uh, she'd lost her front tooth <laughs> at the time. <laughs> and also in the photo is your toy clown Bubbles, who you made. Yes, he was a kit. When he was made, he's blue and white stripes, but we put a green covering over him because they needed the colours for um, primary colours on the test card. Nobody expected it to last for more than six months or a year. It's supposed to have been on for about 70,000 hours. Well, that would be some sort of record, wouldn't it? In the Midlands, ATV's new colour studios and outside broadcast trucks were up and running. A staff of around 2,000 made programmes ranging from regional news and sport to Bob Monkhouse's live Sunday afternoon game show, The Golden Shot. And all of them started like this. ATV's In Colour logo remained unchanged until it became central in 1982, heading up network favourites like Crossroads and Tiswas. And talking of Tiswas, this is ATV announcer Joan Palmer on the show in the mid-1970s. 
She's now retired to her native New Zealand, but in 1969 she led the ATV Colour Girls, who were dispatched across the Midlands to promote the new service. The ATV Colour symbol was going to be a seal with a ball balancing on its nose, a very colourful beach ball. And I spent a day feeding fish to the seal and we had photographers and everything there. You don't really realise just how historical it is until you look back and realise that what you were doing was a part of creating history. Look back on it 50 years later and you think, by gosh, that was a step forward. Indeed, and that fact was not lost on that week's TV Times, which put colourful comedian Benny Hill on the cover and dedicated several pages inside to the technological leap. That weekend, ITV's first big colour production went out, the Royal Variety Performance, with a hitherto monochrome monarch now in turquoise and tiara as she arrived at the London Palladium. Just when they think they've seen us, we'll zoom away to me. Opening the show, Des O'Connor, with a space-age song and dance routine as a prelude to the Apollo 12 moon landing due a few days later. That was also supposed to be a colour TV coup, but astronaut Alan Bean accidentally pointed the camera at the sun and burnt out its internal circuits. We the sun, that's bad. Never mind. Later that same night, Des was back at the Palladium and back on the box, although this time somewhat unexpectedly. Tonight, Des O'Connor, the first of our series, This Is Your Life. <laughs> Fifty years on, Des, who's now 87, is still working. And so are some of these pieces of TV history, all of which you can see at the Kaleidoscope event here at Birmingham City University tomorrow. Like this TV camera from 1953 that was used at the Queen's coronation. Incidentally, a TV licensing revealed this week that 509 households in the West Midlands still get their programmes from a black and white TV. And some of these sets are worth more now than they were when they were new. So, check your loft, check your garden shed. You may be sitting on a piece of TV treasure. Oh, Andy, thank you so much for that amazing romp through TV history. I loved it.